um, welcome to Expensive Thrills, where unlike our cheap counterpart, we're actually eating good food. And uh, we're gonna be traveling to Homestead, where uh, hopefully we'll get some delicious cuisine that's over, you know, $100, I hope. If it's not over $100, then is it really expensive? <laughs> welcome to the Hole, which is Northampton, Massachusetts. And look at over there, it must be an accident. There's a siren going. It's classic, you know. <laughs> well, there we go. So over here, you can see uh, these pillars, which I'm actually funding the refurbishing of. They're ancient Greek pillars. But uh, hopefully that project will successful. You know, under budget over time, whatever. <laughs> That's not it. <laughs> so you see here, it's deals and steals, but like, we're on expensive drills here. We're not like peasants, so. Of course we're not going there. We're actually gonna go up here at Strong Ave, crossing not at the crosswalk 10 feet away, but in the middle of the road like one does when you're rich, you know? Another one of my projects of refurbishing the brick. Molino's Italian brick. Uh, it's, it's a pretty good place, but. Uh, you say it's a cheap thrill or an expensive thrill? It's an expensive thrill. thrill. Definitely go there, I think. That's a, that's a good question. See, all these places are expensive. Look at, you can tell by this uh, lapis work up here. I'm not sure if that's what that is, but I think it sounds right, so. It looks expensive, so I like it. The thumbs up for me. See, private parking, that's what you want to look for. You don't want public parking. Do you ever park in the public parking or stick to private? It's only private. I mean, if you're public parking, I mean, like. They're gonna get you. Ooh, look at that. There, there's a potential right there. Hey, prom's coming up, guys. Buy your girl some uh, expensive jewelry. Here we are. sorts of objects and decanters and beautiful little herbage. Oh, that's straight, that's straight from the, the babbling brook, as they say. Let's like, have my uh, partner here take a couple swings. Yeah, that's, that's quality. That's quality water right there. Hey, Jesse, cheers. Hey. Beauty. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. Right from the springs. Especially this uh, jar we got here. Oh. It's a, I think it's a decanter, actually. So uh, you can tell this is a uh, hand blown glass from, I think they do it in the south of Italy. Maybe it's the north of Italy, actually, where uh, they have the uh, hand blown glass, which, uh, of course, I own a factory there. They make all my vases and, you know. So it is what I don't want to get into it. So here we have our bread, focaccia. Gotcha. So uh, she said it was uh, knocked over on the way here. So let me prop it up, like she said, before we take our pictures. Uh, that looks like it looks like there's a kind of a glaze. It looks like the top of my bald dad's head, kind of. So um, I think we're gonna all take a bite. Are we not, lads? Very salty. Mm, very savory. Very delicious. I like it. I, I, tend, I tend to agree with him on all those. Um, Flavors. Uh, see, the glaze on top seems to be some olive oil or olive such oil. on top. This is very good. That's actually good. I, I love this. Here we have what's quite possibly the world's largest two spoons. I mean, that's gonna be great for any large scoops of ice cream or you know chicken noodle soup when you're sick. You know, <laughs> you know how it is. But wow, those are magnificent polished spoons. What's the material there? Seems like a uh, stainless steel. So um, here, I'm not even sure what this is, but it looks absolutely gorgeous. We have whipped ricotta. Oh, yeah. that's what that is. Whipped ricotta. So we have these sturdy pieces of bread with this absolutely honey glazed, delicious. Look at that. Can you get the stretch? See the little dangly bit right there? That's how you know it's quality. Let me take my first bite. Here. Yeah. Mmm. Crunchy texture and the nice uh, foamy ricotta just, oh. 
maravilloso. With the nice uh, little bit of honey in there to add a little sweet in it. Oh, yes. Beautiful. He actually owns yeah. the yeah. largest honey farm in America. In America, yeah. So here we have um, Caesar salad, I believe. It's their take on the famed no. Caesar salad. Oh, with, uh, <laughs> oh my God. Bro, what <laughs> is this? <laughs> like I said, my servant usually does this for me. So here we are serving the Caesar salad. Caesar salad, you know, it's literally the salad of emperors, you know? Shout out Julius Caesar. Oh, sure. My boy. Thank you, sir. The crispy croutons with the nice uh, lettuce on there. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Fresh crouton from the oven. Mmm. Hi guys, so um, we're here with a little decor review here. We got the Rome Colosseum in Iceland here. The light above it really accents it. It's not too down, but it points up so you get a nice ambiance going. We got the speaker up there. No music playing at the moment, but and like, maybe you see, some of You it notice later. these pillars, very similar inspiration to the ones downtown that I'm actually personally refurbishing with my sugar fund, as they say. But uh, you see how the ancient Greek, even though I know it's in, uh, where did you say it was? Iceland. 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 Yeah. Even though it's in the Nordic country of Iceland, very Mediterranean style pillars. And, and, and we, we have history degrees, so we're no, we know what we're talking about. Are, are, are these pillars getting shipped over here, or are you have new actually, pillars? We're reconstructing them, so we actually take them down. See how they're kind of not up there? Yeah. So we take brick by brick, we take them off, putting them right down here in whole downtown Northampton. <laughs> So here we have the uh, black kale salad, which uh, personally was recommended by uh, Charlotte, our host. And we're all inquisitively looking at it. So this is a wonderful combination of, we get the leafy greens, and then we get a little nuttiness with those little bits of what seems like nuts. And, um, and then we also get this cheese, which just, Gives it the umami, you know, kind of je ne sais quoi that just makes this a really hearty um, swath of the savory, sweet, nutty, you know. All right, so this is also the black kale salad, as Liam talked about. Um, all right, so I'm also trying the black kale salad. Oh, Charlotte. All right, also the uh, black kale salad, as uh, Liam just talked about, recommended by Charlotte. I have to say, it's a great mix of, you know, the leafy greens and, and other other flavors, but the supplemental... It's so good. It, it's so good. But the supplemental walnuts just uh, inglazed um, within the it's, salad. It's um, black kale, very juice vinaigrette, um, shallot, shallots, I think. Hazelnuts and like pickled onion, I think it's my favorite food. It's amazing. It's 10 out of 10, the best item on this menu, probably besides the bread and the poutine. You know, hazelnuts, they're, they're an amazing nut, very underutilized. I know Mr. Baldwin, I know you like putting uh, hazelnut coffee, you know, like that's your go-to hot hazelnut coffee in the morning, keeps you going, keeps the uh, the wits sharp. But here it's utilized in a, in a nice subtle just punch that you know, complements the, the, the vinaigrette and the shallot sweetness and then just gives you a nice little nuttiness. It's, a, it's just, it's nice to get nutty once in a while, you know? I think this salad also really brings the farm to table taste to this uh, nice restaurant here, so yeah. We actually have a very um, close relationship with our farms. Our chef, um, our head chef is also the owner, so he goes to the farms and he picks out um, the vegetables, and we actually have one farm that they dedicate almost a quarter of their land to producing vegetables just for us for like the summer. Follow me, if you will, to the deep dark depths of the ocean, where you find the octopus. So he'll, here I'll be uh, trying this. Now I think this is where you find the octopus, very similar to calamari, but uh, looks unbreaded. So let's see. Mm. Wow. Now look at that. That just looks like, you can see the little tentacles. Now we have the rings and then we have what most people pick out, but you know, your boy isn't going to, but uh, we have the uh, little squid with the tentacles. So like, here we go. <laughs> Just scrum dilly -umstress. So, um, you know, after trying this a little bit further, you know, barely making a dent, to be honest. There's nice breadcrumbs topping it off. There, it seems like there's a couple hints of basil or basil, if you're pretentious. 
and um, it, it's a nice combo. To be honest, um, I don't know. It's it's good, but I would recommend not getting this because if you don't like squiggly seafood, there's like a married couple next to us. But. Um, if you don't like seafood, and there, it seems like maybe like some sriracha or something would just like give it the kick it needs. But still, cheers to the chef. So here we have what is probably the 10th course of the night. It is Mafalde. And it is a uh, exquisite little pasta dish, I believe. And it's got, you know, see? Some leafy greens You can tell they put the details in. Like, you see how, yeah, the greens, it, it pops the color. If it had no greens, it'd just be boring, you know? It'd just be straight white, it'd just be straight. But no, you gotta put in the color, you gotta have the contrast. You have um, to have the opposite ends of the color wheel, it, if you will. The Mafalde has cacio e pepe, which is cheese and pepper. Um, and it also has lemon oil, and we've got some, um, greens on top. By so, the way. cacio e pepe is a traditional, super simple meal you can actually make at home. It's like you take, um, yes it is Charlie, leave it alone. Um, it's where you put olive oil and then you roast some just cracked pepper. It's a lot of cracked pepper. And then, then you, what you want to do, you want to cook the pasta. Save some of your pasta water because that adds a lot of girth to the pasta. And you want to mix that around with some Parmesan cheese, preferably maybe some uh, uh, Romano. And it just makes it just wonderful, like three ingredient meal. You can really make a house. Oh, actually, Pepe, look it up. And they're really making a mess here, but uh, it's okay. Expensive thrills, but really cheap sensibilities, you know. I would just like to say that the texture is the texture is immaculate. Like that's the first thing you notice. Like it's re it's cooked to perfection. Like I'm sure Liam has more to say as he's indulging right about. I do. So. That pasta is cooked perfectly al dente, which is, you know, slightly firm. You know, you take it out right, you know, before it's cooked. You don't want it to be overcooked. You know, you can throw uh, it out the wall if it sticks. That's how you know it's good. So you want it perfectly al dente. We've done masterfully. Shout out to the chef. There seems to be some citrusy notes in that, which just perfectly complements the creamy, but not overdone sauce. It's just great touch. It's a great really, touch. Really, really amazing. The lemon. Oh yeah, perfect. Really amazing. First bite of the tiramisu. Mm. Oh yes, not too sweet, beautiful combination. The powdered sugar on top adds a little bit of, you know, to it. <laughs> yeah, a little. And uh, the booger sugar always yeah. helps. And oh. We mean just like the powdered sugar by that. Nice, nice ending to the meal. <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay. Beautiful. Oh wow, that is money feet. It just melts in the mouth. Oh. It's, um, <laughs> Oh wow, it's, it's, it's chocolatey. The chocolate is very but it's rich. But it's subtle, it's not too aggressive. It's not like those darn chocolate cakes that they be buying at first. <laughs> this is the Budino. We're gonna try a little of that. Once again, chocolate base, very rich. There's some like salted and soft. Fire. <laughs> Fire. There's, there's gas to be honest with you. <laughs> like honestly, well, this whole shit is just gas. Like. Can I try some? Clean, clean. Oh, thanks. COVID free. I love you know, the Buddha said that life is suffering. Well, here we have the Budina or something like that. Budino, it's masculine, not feminine. <laughs> wow. You, you, do, you, do you taste the added salt touch, like salted chocolate? Oh, you're right. Somewhat? That's kind of like a salted caramel type. Yeah. Rich, it's, it's fully just, like it's been emulsified into a, like a nice paste. The, the just, whipped cream adds a touch. Yeah, to oh wow, that's, that's just rich. About as rich as we are, to be honest, but like expensive thrills coming back at you. That was a good one. <laughs> so here, in conclusion, we get the check for Homestead. And it is a cool, cool $136. That is not in your mama's piggy bank. That is a nice hefty price. Perfect for expensive thrills. It was perfect. A nice variety of Mediterranean Italian cuisine. Just, I mean, it was it was just wonderful. Wonderful service. Wonderful hostess. Just, you know, a great place. And um, now I will be dishing out the racks. You know? Is there a second? Wait. Oh. <laughs> There's our second check. So our second check is thirty-six fifty-four. Thanks to the hundred dollars taken off by my gift card, which I got as a Christmas bonus for being a great employee. Um, yeah, and I'm also 
just like a really considerate person, which is why I don't. You're definitely cutting this part. Yeah. <laughs> I donated my um, work bonus to the transcript. So yeah, Homestead is actually pretty cheap. We got um, two bread with ricotta, we Caesar. Can't we we can't don't it. read the fucking menu. Crostini, two, 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 two black kill salads, and the fall day All right, let me, let me. Tiramisu and um, the wage equity fee all for thirty six dollars. Yeah, thank you. All right, are we ready? What is going on here? What is going on? I thought you. I kind of did, except I was hot to milk. So as we depart on our private vets to our chateaus at the south of France, we really would love to uh, thank you for joining us for expensive thrills. And uh, it, yeah, I think I got a business call, so see ya. Thanks, Homestead. <laughs> <In the water. laughs>